very much, Chairperson uh, of the session. It's actually disarming that Umasi Zokuluma Awubi Nomkulu. That thing is very important. It's very important in setting a tone. However, I understand we are young people. It's Friday, it's seven o'clock. Uh, in no time, uh, those strategic places. There will be flocking, there will be activity, and we want to find ourselves in those activities. I understand. Uh, let me greet Comrade uh, Dr. David Masonto, the NEC of the ANC, Comrade Ndumiso uh, Mukako, the fellow NEC member of the Youth League. You see, I'm uneasy when I speak about us as leadership of the Youth League. <laughs> yeah, NEC difficult. members. Yeah, it's criminal. It's, uh, it's actually, uh, no, I will not say criminal, but uh, I'm uneasy uh, because it's questionable. I would say questionable, in fact. Uh, let me greet the leadership of SASCO, the leadership of the YCL, the leadership of the ANC in the region, the progressive chairperson who was, very, who was clear when he was here that uh, the youth league is finding resonance in the structures of the of the ANC here. Uh, let me greet Comrade Gugu, who is temporarily at the helm of the provincial Munis. We hope when she comes she'll tell us who TP Mali was fully man. Let me greet the leadership of the ANC Youth League in the province and the leadership of the ANC Youth League in the region led by Comrade Tom and Comrade Castro. Comrades, let me start here by saying, of course, Comrade Castro says we must speak to you about why should young people vote for the ANC at this current epoch. <coughs> and we must make a disclaimer that we are uneasy as young people. You see, we're 60% of the demographics of this country. And as matters stands, the leadership that is presented to us through the ANC list is making us to be at ease. Because definitely, a comrade Balega Mbete who's 70, how does she start crafting a future that she will not be in? <laughs> and that is a disclaimer we must make, even when we say to the ANC, we are definitely clear that we're going to vote for the ANC. Firstly, because we as young people have interrogated the manifestos and the policies of all the political parties across the board. And we can tell you, we do have superior policies as the ANC. What we have a problem with is implementation or the approach of implementation of those policies. Either through the people that we deploy to be at the helm of implementing those policies or ourselves with just getting into parliament and starting to speak in tongues when we must implement the commitments that we've made. And that is what we have a problem with. So I, 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 will, I will, of course, I, I understand it's a dialogue and I was told it's a dialogue. So my understanding of a dialogue is that we will just make a small presentation so that we allow you to interact with ourselves. Uh, I will be very, very short. Comrade Castor, I, I I can assure you that the young academics, the professionals, and the young, bus the young business people that we are addressing, we are aware of their conditions. We are very much aware. We are aware that you are discriminated in the workplaces based maybe on race, mostly on gender currently, and on age. Not so long ago, we were at, at pains to explain to senior doctors who were fighting in Limpopo in the Department of Health, who were just chastising the MEC that he, she has appointed younger doctors. We know we, as the professionals, for us to actually move up the ladder, we must first turn 60, and that is a problem. We know that we are speaking to professionals who are carrying what we call, I don't want to call it black text, it's apartheid legacy. You see, when you are a young professional, you start working, you earn 20,000 at least. You have five of your siblings that you must take to school. You must go build your father's house, whom he, he was unable to build. And I call it apartheid legacy because I blame it on the apartheid special development. I don't blame it on our fathers and our mothers. We know very well that, as if that is not enough, 
you must go to a bank, you want to buy shelter, you get there, you are black, you are going to be charged exorbitant and even ridiculous interest rate as, as, as opposed to a young white person who will get there and get a favorable interest rate. We know these this, this conditions. As such, the last one which is very, which is very prominent and is sickening and it is done sometimes by our own comrades. We know young professionals who are females have to go sleep with HODs, they have to sleep with MECs to be employed or to be given students. We know very well. So sex for jobs is one of the limitations or one of the challenges that we are faced with as young academics or as, as professionals. But we further know that as business, as young entrepreneurs, trading with the state is a crisis because you must have a great, you must have a certain grade, you must be at a certain level, you must, and you see, they say you, we will actually give you more points when you've got experience. Where do we get experience as young people if I've just registered a PTY and I want to start a business and work in the state? And these are the impediments that are there. We know about these things, and we know those are conditions that we, you are faced with. Two things, and I think Comrade Masondo will actually deliberate on this on, 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 on this uh, issue. In the manifesto of the ANC where the president said we are going to grow South Africa together, we agree we must grow South Africa together. We are actually growing it ourselves because we don't have any other choice. We are going to be in that South Africa in 2020 something. Majority of them, those, are, those who are on that list, might not even be there, we know. But we, we are at pain because we must. The president or the commitment that is made by the ANC is that it is recommitting itself to building a developmental state. And you see, that is very important because what the ANC says there is that we are going, it's going to take a leadership role, either in economic policies, in the political outlook, in social matters. The ANC is going to take a, leader, a leadership role in shaping what becomes economic policies of this country. And it says we are going to radically transform the, the, the economy of this country. And it says what we mean by that, we mean that we are going to transform the ownership, the control, and the management of the economy in this country. Now, what is in our hands? We know the ANC, you know when you go and you do door to door, if you do door to door, young people will be saying to you, the ANC has been promising us a lot of things. Of course, we've seen few things, we've seen free education, which it is, it is difficult to access. There is free education, but it is difficult to access. If you have done a right to learn, or if you have done a back to school, you go to universities in general, young people are there in lines, they have not applied, because they don't have the information, or they don't have means of going online and applying online. So it is still difficult to access. So what we can only do ourselves, knowing the weaknesses of the organization that we love so much, we are not going to bury ourselves in the mud. We are going to use, and this is something we must, we must actually adopt, Comrade Castro and uh, Tulis, and I know Ndumiso is still a young person. I don't know about others who are in the list, but <laughs> we are still young people now. We are still, still here for at least for four, for four years to come. <laughs> we must say, this is an approach uh, that we must tell the NC to do. Firstly, that we are going to use the balance and check checks approach. That means we are going to be the vanguard of the people, not of the ANC, to ensure that the ANC implements what it has committed. That's what we must do. So what do we are as the youth league and we're active? If the ANC has said in community X we're going to build a bridge, and that time comes and the ANC is not building a bridge, we must be the first ones who calls for heads to roll. We must mobilize the community ourselves and say, we're going to march to that municipality, even if it's ours, so that that person who's not implementing what we're going on must be. That's what we must, that is the approach we're going to use. We're going to vote for the ANC, but that is how we're going to deal with these issues. The second one is, we must agree we are not going to vote for the ANC and give it a blank check. As young people, we must actually design, we must inform what the ANC will be doing in the next five years. I know the ANC would go to these forums, they would draft the program, even when the cabinet, you see, I am a board member of the NYDA. 
we have been fighting just to sit in the cabinet in the hotel. Because when they plan, they will allocate you only 400 million. That in translation means you must actually budget 20 rand per young person to develop a young person in this main country because you are not there. So each and every department makes their own point. They build a business case. You are not there. You can't speak for yourself, you know. So we must ensure that we do it in a manner that if the ANC can't listen to us when we speak to them, we must make sure that they listen to us, even if it means it is unconventional methods, but that's what we must do. So in closing, comrades, because I said I'm not going to be long, the last thing that I can tell you is that, comrade chairperson, I disagree. You see, young people are innovative, especially these ones, the young professionals, your in business entrepreneurs. I can tell you because as a board member of the NYDA, where, young, where we give grant, grants to young people to start up their own businesses. The process is that young people must come to us and they must give us an idea. And we develop, we refine their idea and we give them a grant. There's a lot of young people who present to us great ideas, innovative ideas, but you are not capacitated because you don't have funding to fund those ideas. So it is not true that young people are lazy, young people just want, I don't agree with it. And it is not true, and we should never say to young people, be patient, <laughs> we are getting there. We must be impatient. Yeah. When we are impatient, we will be the correct catalyst to ensure that there is real change and change that impacts in our lives. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I fully disagree. I say how we approach this matter as young people, we must demand that our government that we're going to vote for must budget adequately, and it must review legislation, especially your triple PMA, to ensure that it is user-friendly for emerging young people because mm. we are, I can't, at the age of 20, I can't have been in tenders and having been, or having done a lot of work in, the, in that space. So there must be user-friendly legislation that allows me the opportunity to do the work, make mistakes, and learn. We, we are going to make mistakes. We must not be just that, because we are learning. It's a process of learning. So even the, 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 the pronunciation of government that is describing experience, comrades, we must be the balance and checks of that pronunciation. If they just advertise a position where they say five years experience, we must just go there to the interviews and say, but you said you are not go, you are going to scrap this thing. So we are here. We are here, we want to work. And that's how we should do it. So uh, I, I, I hope the ANC will uh, will put us at ease because they're the custodian of the benefit. We're also the custodian. We're going to vote for the ANC, but we're going to do it in a manner that we should be on guard as young people. Amanda. Oh,